their vampires can sometimes get into the alien mm. version okay. of otherworldly creature. And they don't necessarily drink your blood, but they will drain your life force. <laughs> okay. Okay. And they can do that sexually. So okay. So watch your ass. Yeah. History. I'd like to follow me down the rabbit hole. History. I'd like to frankly. I want to know. Hello and welcome to Hilf. History I'd like to fuck, where history is a party and everybody's coming. I'm your host, Don Brody. Vampires are sexy. <laughs> and we know this because it doesn't matter if you're picturing spooky old Nosferatu or Bella Lugosi or one of them sexy adolescent vampires <laughs> from the Twilight books. Yes, I am Team Edward. The fact is, we love them. Okay? And they have dominated folklore and books and movies for hundreds of years. And today, they're getting hilfed right through the heart. I'm joined by comedian Macy Isaacs to talk about the origin of vampire folklore and what, from the many stories about them, is actually real. <laughs> we'll go around the world and see how vampires in Japan and Alaska differ from the ones in Transylvania. And we'll also discuss the most effective ways to fight them off. Unless, of course, <laughs> you're choosing to invite them in. Let's get started. <sighs> It's vampire time. I love how we're talking about them like they are for sure real. Oh, well. Okay. I guess I'll buckle up. <laughs> I know. It is kind of... This history, I'll tell you, it took me around and around and around. Uh-huh. And, and it made me a little uneasy. Yeah. I'm not going to... There's an uneasiness to this. It's sort of like I did an episode a while back on fairies. Mm-hmm. And it was sort of like largely... What's the explanation for this clearly mythical creature? Mm -hmm. But like, as long as you're talking about possibilities, you're like, all right, what if uh, everyone's saying they're seeing the thing and they're seeing the thing? Right. Then what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, and it's, I I guess when there's something so big like fairies or vampires, their root, the root is in something maybe real. Or Well, and then like aliens, they right. came out and were like, for real though, literal real aliens. That's true. And we were right. like, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking no. But the other stuff, we will never let go of the ghosts and the vampires yeah. and the werewolves. Yeah, I could go with an alien vampire, though. Oh. I'd buy that. Right? Yeah. I know there is something kind of about that. You're like, sure, they got to suck the blood of the DNA. Of the, yeah. Uh, sure. There's uh -huh. science yeah, in there somewhere. absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Maisie Isaacs has come across town. She drove yes. in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We're sitting together at my kitchen table. I know. I it's love so summer. fun. And today's not as hot as yesterday. No. So that's something exciting. Slightly less crematorium-esque mm -hmm. um, outside, which is nice. And and it's particularly nice because, like, we're both stand-up comedians, and there's this thing that happens. I don't know if you agree. We're like, because we don't have coworkers, mm -hmm. like colleagues that you're really with all the time, every now and again you get to intersect with someone that you think is really cool and really funny, and you're like, hey, Right? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now how do I hmm, see you again, maybe? And it's like, I feel like the first base of like platonic friendship is, will you be on my, my podcast? podcast? Absolutely. <laughs> it's also the only time you can sort of get a comedian during the day. That's right. To do anything. Mm -hmm. um, ah, yogurt blew it. Yogurt. But he's still a good boy. He's a good boy. Yogurt, you bark again, you're going to go. Oh. Was that a bark again? Oh, it sounds like it's so far away, though, when we have these headphones yeah. in. You know what? Sounds like it's the neighbors. Yogurt can stay. Yogurt stays. I feel like also what I've learned about canines and vampires, mm -hmm. we might need him. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So we need him as we talk about this. <laughs> you never That's know. a great idea. You never okay. Know. Let's get to know mm -hmm. you, Macy. Here's what I've got. Okay. Okay, here's what I've done, because I always help my guests. Uh-huh. I've dug into yogurt. Okay. Okay. Uh, originally from Austin. Mm-hmm. Stand-up comedian. She's killing it in L.A. She's at all the stages. Sexiest festivals, too. The Netflix is a joke. Yeah. And you're everywhere. You are recording your Dry Bar special this month. Yeah, a How couple cool weeks. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. She runs a monthly show in Santa Monica called The Picture Day Show. Podcast, mm -hmm. co-host, uh, mental illness and comedy. What did, what did I miss? Fill no, that's it. That's great. <gasps> really? That's amazing. Tell me yeah. more about your podcast. 
So it's called SSR, I'm okay. Um, and a lot of people don't get the title, but we're still going for it. It's meant to, it's a medication, mm-hmm. right? SSRIs are a medication. So it's like yeah. if you know, then you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, okay. usually it's better to have a name that everyone knows. But <laughs> that is it. And it's I'm, I'm the co-host with um, a guy that I've known for a while. We started stand up together, but now he's a doctor. So oh. he's a psychiatrist. Whoa. So he, we bring on like other psychiatrists. And then we bring on some comedians to talk about their mental mental illnesses. <laughs> so, because that's a pretty fair. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to find. It's pretty easy to pull people sure. from that pool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and they've generally given you some indication insight. on stage. <laughs> if if not indirect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, I just get a feeling like you're on. Yeah. So you've some. talked about this on stage. Are you willing to also talk about it? <laughs> Can we get like real? Do Barbara Walters them a little bit? Yeah, yeah. And um, we've had someone come on too that was like, you know, someone's diagnosed me with this, but I don't know if it's uh, legit. So I'm hoping for a better diagnosis today. And does your co-host diagnose? I mean, he's I know, a doctor. He, I don't think you're technically allowed, like ethically, right. to do that. Sure. But I do hope that it, if you're listening to it, or if or if you're on it, you do get have some more answers about maybe what's going on. Yeah. yeah. What is what is something that you like unexpected that you learned in the course of doing this podcast? Well, I didn't know that ADD wasn't a thing anymore. I thought oh. that was a different form of ADHD. Oh, yeah. But Same. I thought it was just we changed the word. We changed. Well, that is what it is, basically. We oh. changed it. But uh, ADD is old. We, we don't, don't say that. We don't say that anymore. Okay, Which because attention know. deficit disorder. We first of all, we I feel like we've dropped a lot of the D's. We don't we, like the disorders. Have, D's are out. D's yeah. are out. Yeah, like PTS. Mm-hmm. You don't got to put the D in there. No, V's are in. D's are in. Yeah. All right. Well, we talked in advance. We're mm-hmm. like big fan of history. Yeah. I was like, want to be on? Like, we have topics. What are some of the things that we can hilf together? And you chose vampires. Can you tell me why? I'll tell you why. And yeah. I don't know if it's the best reason to be on um, a podcast about it, but I'm Team Edward. <gasps> Hardcore. Uh, so, okay. Um, I recently mm. read all of the books, mm. all the Twilight books, mm. because I, I watched the movies, but I never read the books. And I've now read the books. As an adult, and it's been it's, mm-hmm. it was an amazing experience, mm-hmm. and I've also kind of just liked. I've noticed I kind of like vampires. I, yeah. I was a vampire for Halloween when I was little. I there's interview with a vampire. Obviously, that movie is great. Great, but the show is also a fantastic. A guy named the show <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, it's really good. And the season two just came out. I haven't watched it yet, but um, I also there's this. Disney Channel original movie when I was younger called Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. Mm. I really liked that one. Caroline <laughs> Ray was in that one. Oh, she dated a vampire. The mom, yeah. the mom of the night. Exactly. Yes. Um, so I think I've always been um, – I yeah, I've always been attracted to the vampire story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super sexy. Very seductive. And they're they're – they're awake in the night and they sleep during the day, which I love. We have a lot. Mm-hmm. It would be like a very symbiotic kind of deal. Mm-hmm. See, I have an interesting relationship with the Twilight vampires. Because okay. Because my favorite vampires are the teenage heartthrob ones. Mm-hmm. But I'm a little older than you. So I got me my Lost Boy Fright Night 80s yeah. bad boy vampires. Mm-hmm. Like I like my vampires in denim. Okay. Jackets okay. With like a lot of patches. And okay. Like metal. And then, and I was pretty like... Yeah, that's established in that. And so when the Twilight books came out, I was like, fuck these dumb Twilight, mm. right? Because it was it's just so dumb. It's not your vampire. Yeah, these, like, it's, uh, it's the Nickelback version of, like, my my boys. Okay. And, um, but I don't like to shit on things. I try to be a nice. You just call it Nickelback, like, though. I know. Okay. I, I'm, this is, I'm being intimate with you. I'm okay, sharing, being it, vulnerable it. with you. So I have been very clear, especially among my friends, mm-hmm. that this Twilight, whatever this Twilight shit is, it's shit. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I've, I've heard it's about abstinence kind of deep down. Oh, it's about okay. how you shouldn't have sex. Uh-huh. And, there's, <laughs> and they like sparkle in sunshine. And uh, mm-hmm. I was like, forget it. So then my, my then boyfriend, now mm-hmm. husband, has a younger sister who's very sweet and idealistic and a teenager. And she says with her eyes wide, Don, 
have you read the Twilight books? Yeah. And I can't tell her it's dumb shit. And anyone who reads it is a dumber mm-hmm. shit for having mm-hmm. read it. So I said, no, I haven't. And she ran to her bedroom and she got Aww. the book and she brought it out. And, uh, and I was like, fuck, you know, yeah. I have to. I mean, this young you have to. girl gave me a book recommendation. Mm-hmm. I can't be a cunt. So I was about to get on a plane for a job in San Francisco. I will never forget this. I did have a book to read. So I bring the goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. Flash forward. Oh, I know where this is going. Mm-hmm. It's two o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I am in my bed. I have not gone out with anyone. I am in my bed, in my room, finishing the book. And I start pacing mm-hmm. because they gave me the first like chapter of, of the this, next book. Of New Moon, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, well, I bet there's a CBS open. <laughs> and if I go down there, they ha- they'll have those terrible paperbacks and you with the seen movie any actors. Movies. No. Okay. So I went down t- and I got like the paperback mm-hmm. with the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Read them all. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And I rasped. I loved them. I read it like my breath was always kind of like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I read them and then I saw the movies. And I and here's, so that is true. What I just told you is 100% true. I'm representing myself accurately. And they're shit. And they're shitty. Yeah. Terrible. Well, book. I do think they get better as she get, becomes a better writer. Like, they they, they do. Like, like, I just, I'm reading the one that she just wrote a couple years ago. That's from Edward's perspective. I had to put a pit in it because I've been too busy. But I, <laughs> I'm getting back, and it's. I think it's a better. It's better. She's. I couldn't disagree more enthusiastically. I thought the part where she switches the first person perspective was the cheapest, crappest writing I've ever read. When it suddenly jumps to Wolf Boy, and oh, we start hearing like from him. I don't like that right? either. Well, I don't like the the wolves, and I yeah. always was told that. If you, because I always watch the movies, and so it just very clearly to me was like Robert Pattinson is greater than everyone else. But then they're like, if you read the books, you'll kind of get Team Jacob. Mm. So I read the books, and I was like, yeah, no, no. Mm -mm." I think though, reading Twilight now um, was better than it, it, it because I, I think I enjoyed it more now than I maybe even would have as. As a teenager. As a teenager. Because it was like I was almost too much of a teenager to, to – it would have like cre- made me more of a teenager at the time, which mm. I don't think I needed. No. And, and I wasn't was... even that much of a teenager, but like I just think it was kind of such a special experience reading it now um, for the nostalgia purposes. Yeah. Well, I think that there's something, the teenage element Mm -hmm. of the vampire story has been pretty consistent, you'll find, throughout history. And I think it is because consciously or subconsciously, it's about transition. Mm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's about Mm -hmm. huge changes, being jumps in, in these singular times. And I think that teenagers are among the ones who are like, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Right. And your desire to just like, and now poof. I'm immortal. I am mm-hmm. an adult. I am powerful, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and the sources of this history are so much fun. I want to tell you, mm-hmm. first of all, where I went to get the history that <laughs> we're about to devour. So Cite your sources. Cite my sources. <laughs> this is kind of it, this like pamphlet style deal. It was a delight. I'm such a nerd um, that I insist on like making notes and margins. Good for you. Starring things, writing things, mm-hmm. going back and circling. And so it means a lot for me to have hard copies of my mm-hmm. research. And so this is basically, you know, an online essay um, but oh, what fun. And it is called The History and the Folklore of Vampires, the stories and legends behind the mythical beings. It's a delight. And then this is the secret history of vampires. There are multiple forms and hidden purposes. And this one really, it's a great companion. They go together because you get the kind of headline uh-huh. from this one. And then this guy digs in and gives you all the like footnote detail. Who was there? What did they see? And what is the documentation for the source? <laughs> I have some back knowledge on this subject, Mm -hmm. too, because uh, vampires and Frankenstein have always kind of held hands. Really? And my very first episode of Hilf ever is about Frankenstein because I'm something of an expert. I'm invited to speak and I've uh, created and performed museum productions on Mary Shelley and the history of the Mm -hmm. novel Frankenstein. And there is a fascinating portion of that history, which is the dark and stormy night during which Mary Shelley first conceives and writes down the the story of a medical student who brings a dead body back to life Mm -hmm. and what happens there. In the same castle on the same evening, another individual named Polidori was writing down 
essentially another the first woman? draft. Uh, a man. Oh, um, Paul, he's I a thought. doctor. Okay. He's writing down the first uh, version of Dracula, of, wow. our, of our contemporary dra- vampire yeah. that we know today. And it it's this nutty fact of history that the, the two most longest lasting monsters of modern times, Frankenstein and Dracula. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're about to be Halloween. These UTCs yeah. just do cunts everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, were conceived of on the same dark and stormy night. Like, and it wasn't like a writer's retreat. It wasn't a writer's <laughs> retreat. It was, there was a lot of opium. Okay. And a lot of writers there, so uh-huh. kind of. Okay, so it was, yeah. <laughs> so it was sort of, yeah. And so with all of this, right, with the books and the research and the stuff, here's my plan for mm-hmm. the hill thing of vampires with you today, Macy. Um, first, we're going to start with the folklore, the origin of the folklore. This, okay. this this individual that we recognize as a vampire, when was it first conceived, mm-hmm. where and why, mm-hmm. okay? Then we're going to go into, as we talked about at the beginning, what's real? What actually is the documented, like, yeah. subsourced research that has to do, what can we what can we sift out as completely made up and based on something? Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> because we're, the world's a weird place, um, and I don't want to be responsible for anyone's immortal demise. No. I feel like this research has given me a lot of resources on how to avoid vampire okay. attack, right? How to spot a vampire Ooh. out there that might not want to get discovered. And if you really want to be a vampire, what? like if that's the deal, I can help you there too. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? I'm I'm really ready. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to start this hill thing of the vampires with a story. Okay. Come with me, Macy, to Romania. Should I close my eyes? If you choose, sure. We are in Romania, 1130 A.D., after death. Got it. <laughs> right? You got it. Okay. We're, the, we're tits deep in the Middle Ages. <laughs> okay. okay. And a guy named Alexandru, he is a farmer. He's a father of six. He dies. Okay. Another important fact about Alexandru is he does not regularly attend church. <gasps> oh, I see where this is going. He is buried. Mm-hmm. Shortly after he's buried, his wife starts to get very pale, very weak, very sickly looking, and then... She dies, Mm. followed subsequently by four of his six sons, one at a time. They get super Mm. weak, super pale, and they die. This is, of course, centuries before we know anything about germs and disease. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. So the question is, what did we do? Where, how did we displease God who fucked up? Mm -hmm. Okay. These are the kind of questions you bring to the local church. Not like maybe we were all eating the same no, that's yeah. crazy. That's okay. witch shit. That is, Watch okay, your damn it. mouth. <laughs> okay, what you do, <laughs> Maisie, is you go to the C-H-U-R-C-H. Okay. All right, and that's where they're going to help you. So they go, and they're like, what do we do wrong? And, of course, the church is like, we um, we know everything. You got to dig up the first one who died, and you got to see if there's any spooky shit okay. going on, and there's a devil up in this. Okay? So they dig up Alexandru. Alexandru, so good. All what right. a good name. I know. And um, and lots of scary shit. This is very unexplained, mm. okay? He's not rotten like you'd expect. Oh, gosh. Or even stiff. He's kind of pliable. In fact, his skin is like real smooth and kind of like healthy, like hmm. moist even. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not where he left him. Okay, he's okay. curled up in there. He's he's laying on his side. His position is clearly He's watching changed. TV. He's watching TV. <laughs> he's got $100 in his hand. <laughs> he's, his nails are long as hell. Okay. His belly's all full like he's been mm. feasting on something. And, and there's a little blood, fresh red liquid blood trickling from the corners of his mouth. The priest says, don't panic. I know exactly what to do. They get a metal, often a steel uh, or iron stake, mm-hmm. stab it through yeah. Alexandru's chest, okay. at which point he goes, and then, he dies. and then they cut his head off and they burn him. <gasps> Whoa. And no more deaths. And that was 1130. 1130 AD in Romania. Now, the only thing about that story mm-hmm. that isn't true <laughs> is all of it <laughs> is the beginning no. <laughs> is that it took place in Burbank last week no. oh <laughs> is, is, that, is that it is not just one story that is the 
composite true elements, the the consistently true elements of hundreds of stories. Mm, okay. That went like that over the course of hundreds of years from all around the world. Now, the majority of the stories that went like that took place in Eastern Europe, yeah. Transylvania, Romania, right? Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of them took place during that Middle Ages, that 500 AD to give or take 1400 AD mm -hmm. timeline. But we have stories like this throughout time and from all around the world. <laughs> okay. Now you're a nerd like me and you're a little nerdy. You want evidence. What do you mean we know this? Right? How do you know this stuff? Right. There's four forms of evidence that inform these stories and why we can't just disregard them as sort of bizarre lies or folk tales that were made up out of nowhere. We have primary evidence, which means we have tons of written, I was there, I saw. Like the young priest is explaining, describing the scene I just told you about to his boss. Hmm. That's one of the things I did last week that was kind of weird you might want to know about, right? Yeah. We have, and people, similar letters, people saying, I was there, I saw the sound, it still haunts me, blah. We have secondary accounts, which are things like, um, <laughs> this is my favorite, like fragments of letters, but they'll be like, oh, you know, Abigail really would love to marry Edward, but the family won't allow it because of all the vampires in his family. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. And you just so, go, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of okay. it's bipolar at that time. It's like, it's got too much bipolar in his family. <laughs> there's something, okay. right? It's, there's something like that. Not that that's not a reason. I'm not saying you should discriminate against someone because they have too much not. bipolar. I was just trying to come up with a similar. Or, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. empathizing, girl. Exactly. That's exactly you. right. There's physical evidence. We have dug up for various reasons mm. a bunch of medieval graves and there's like a disproportionately high number of them where they got to add states through their chest and their heads are cut off after death mm. and we're like what the fuck are all these people doing and then we have like legal documented evidence of like <laughs> a lord in some district writes a letter to the lower lords being like can you tell the fucking peasants to stop digging each other up and cut their heads off because it's spooky we don't like it yeah. so, we, so this is we know this happened. This isn't just one fucking guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's also people who just love telling whether it's true or not. The church is like, you pay me $15 for the holy water and you continue to come to yeah. us. And plus somebody sees this shit, they're probably going to church next week. Absolutely. Because this seems very spooky. you got grave robbers, keeps grave robbers out of there. You tell them that oh, this stuff. Yeah. So there's some of it that was like perpetuated mm -hmm. on purpose, whether or not the people actually thought it was true. But this is how mm -hmm. it kind of comes down to us. And what we know now is like the undead as a creature is universal. Every human civilization that we've ever known about or known, had any evidence about, what we know is that we take care of our dead mm -hmm. and we try to keep them away. Keep them dead. And we've got ghosts, zombies, yeah. werewolves, and vampires. And creatures like them are ubiquitous, universal, and timeless. But like that vampire, that's the one we're talking about. Like mm -hmm. among those undeads, the vampire specifically has has two qualities that separate, you know, from all these other yeah. variations. One is it was once human. Right. Okay. And the other is it feasts on the blood of the living. Outside of that, we don't know. And this is where we're going to get a little quiz on you. Okay. okay. Quiz me. So we know a vampire was once human and drinks blood of the living. If those are the only things that all the folk tales have in common, yeah. there are eight other characteristics okay. commonly associated with vampires. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see how many of them you can guess. Okay. And then we'll see like what where the origin of that particular okay. came from. Okay. So um, do you want any clues or do you well, think you kind of got I'll them? try. Let me see what I can do. Let's see what we got. Let's uh, see what we got. You said you're a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, is one of them insanely hot? Is attractiveness on there? You know, pretty <laughs> sexy. Um, yeah. I mean, seduction <laughs> for They sure. seduce you, right? For sure seduction yeah. is a big part of it. Our first movie vampire was Nosferatu. Oh, he was ugly. Super he, that, That's so true. I'm Super glad we got away town. from that. But the first literary vampires mm -hmm. from straight fiction, you know, well, and a lot of queer yeah. fiction, actually, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, are, yeah, a cornerstone of it is like, because you have to fall for them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't know why I want this guy to bite me so Yeah, bad. right. Totally. You got to be able to let them get close enough to your neck. Absolutely. But other, okay, I know garlic. Garlic is great. Garlic for sure. Is that on there? It's because, and that was from folklore, mm -hmm. because 
if you're thinking about this like mystical, how does God help us kind of stuff, incense is considered oh, yeah. holy and sacred. It is a thing that we helps, it transcends the way we think when we smell it. And garlic is like a peasant's incense. If you're just thinking, I need something that smells real bad because yeah. like God loves that, mm -hmm. garlic's probably what you have in your house. And that's why you wear it around your neck. And that's why like you wear a lay. It. Yeah. Like, exactly, like a little lay. Yeah. Exactly, right? You're a little Italian. Like, yeah, you can come over. I, I would. It's funny if like you, um, in those times you come over and you get laid with the um, garlic. Exactly. That's, One way or the other. That's yep. exactly right. Uh -huh. There was actually a story I read about a guy who was so terrified of literal vampires that he died by choking on a clove of garlic that he kept in his mouth. Just so that they wouldn't bite his neck, He would right? sleep with garlic in his mouth <gasps> to keep the vampires this away. This is a real person. A real person. And okay. he choked and died on it. So oh. did vampires kill him? Is he a vampire now? Kind of. Yeah. They did. You're <laughs> they exactly did. right. Yeah. They ended up killing him. That. The fear. The fear, I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a uh, hotness in garlic. Uh -huh. um, you kind of already talked about the stake through the heart mm -hmm. that's necessary. That um, is, uh, yep, one to, way kill. to kill him, and for the sure. the head off with the head. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say the sleeping in a coffin. Great, yes, that's, that's number them. three. Okay, um, that one was kind of invented by fiction in the sense that in these folklore tales I told you about from the Middle Ages, because a lot of them were peasants, mm -hmm. they didn't have coffins. Coffins kind of a rich man's game. Yeah, so they they had interesting ways of being like little holes that the spirit came out mm -hmm. and feasted on the living and then came back under because the, they would be like this ground hasn't been turned up but they still psychologically justified that they had left the grave somehow to suck people's blood okay and it just made it's kind of so interview with a vampire i can't remember if it's in the movie but in the show they do sleep in coffins yeah and also what we do in the shadows which is one of oh, my favorites. oh i need to see that it's so, so good. start with the movie that's what i was gonna ask because yeah. it's a movie and a show right yeah, the so. movie oh it's so great it's i'm i'm so gonna great. love it i you're gonna love i need it. to watch that as soon as possible um i let's see what else um the teeth Fangs, great. Yeah. yeah, that's number two. Okay. Uh, no, in folklore, their teeth don't change. Their nails get longer, yeah. but their teeth, they just bite you. So that's a Halloween teeth. spirit situation yeah. that they <laughs> exactly. tried to fix. And what I'm saying is if you spot one of these fucks with normal teeth, does not mean you're safe. No, and like um, Edward, none of the Cullens had those teeth. No. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I was going to say like, they stay the same age. Yeah, that immortality, That's immortality timelessness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that kind of, yeah. It wasn't on the top eight, but I feel like it deserves an honorable Thank mention. you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, what about like um, insane, like really strong or like uh, supernatural abilities? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they can, yeah, there was the, I remember that scene that always got me with the Bram Stoker Winona Ryder. Yeah. One. Yeah. He like scuttles on the yeah. wall. Yeah. Like they can cockroach. scuttle. They can scuttle. That's scary. Yeah. Is that number one? Scuttles? No, no scuttles. Oh, okay. Wasn't, scuttles didn't make the top eight. That's a cute dog name. Oh. Scuttles. Little Scuttles. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I'm, uh, Scuttles is kind of a great name for like a really scary dog too. That is true. Like Dracula. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> he scuttles like a, the undead. Uh, what else is there? Um, do you want to hear the number one? Yeah. Daylight can kill it. Oh, okay. Which is not folklore. Yeah, it shouldn't be that. It doesn't kill it. It doesn't kill it. It killed it. It was the way that Nosferatu film, that 1922 mm -hmm. silent film, was like such a huge deal for like the visual of a vampire. Mm -hmm. And that's how they kill him in the end of that movie. So it really became like a, you know, yeah. deal. Um, Dracula doesn't care for sunlight. The Cullens fucking sparkle like in beautiful, it. beautiful. Exactly. But they can't go because yeah. everyone will know. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But there is, um, in the folklore, there's one particular tradition where the vampires can only go out at noon and midnight. Mm. So. Hmm. Well, Nosferatu, I'm thinking, had those really long two front teeth, right? Yes. So maybe it just, as it kept going, they just moved the long teeth over. They're like, actually, uh -huh. the, the length would be better if it was on the side, like a, like sure. a dog, 
Right. Well, you know. Well, I'm sure it was also because it was a silent movie and they didn't have to worry about their actors speaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through those teeth. Finally, they were like, I mean, Bella Lugosi was like, uh, guys. You're so right. They're like, we have to move these teeth because yeah, they can't exactly. speak. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still want to make them seen, but <laughs> we'll figure this out. <laughs> Um, the other one was No Reflection. Oh, in that's a, a good mirror. one. That was Dracula kind of invented that one, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool because it, it parallels the like um, the the commonplaceness of mirrors. Mm-hmm. Mirrors were always considered kind of this mystical thing that that required self-reflection, that it actually yeah. had sort of a psychological impact on human beings when mirrors were brought into our mm-hmm. homes because we had a sense of self. Yeah, I literally can see myself the way the world does and, and what that did to our psyche. So they were already like, ooh. So it was like, oh, they can't see themselves. Anymore. And I think of that too as a lacking of a soul. Mm-hmm. If uh, that, which I feel like is a vampire thing too, is like they mm-hmm. don't have a soul. Yeah, like mm-hmm. the mirror shows you you're who you you're are, in, and you're and mm-hmm. you're nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wolves, wolves are tricky per our Twilight friends yeah. because there are pieces of fiction that suggest that vampires can turn into wolves. Whoa! But there's also almost as much that says wolves are natural enemies mm-hmm. of vampires. So that one is sort of a pick your pick your okay. legend. Bats. Are bats. similar. Mm-hmm. Bats are similar. They there was a there are some places where if a bat flies over your grave, you can become a vampire. That's too easy. <laughs> exactly. And then it was also, I think, in the folklore, how they explained how the undead were getting out of their crypts and out of their mm-hmm. coffins was that there were these small holes and the, they became bats, and that was how they did it. Bats. So in because I'm from Austin, bats are common oh they should be common there but i think they're having a hard time like i've seen your bridge the bridge and the bats and oh, yeah it was one of the coolest nights of my life yeah i hope i hope i even though i don't you know i don't want a bat near me but like i we need them to eat the mosquitoes mm-hmm. um and if that means that they also turn into vampires i'm still okay with that because i'd rather vampires roam than mosquitoes agreed mm-hmm. agreed um certainly um there is a proximity issue Yes, exactly. But I understand on the big picture. Yeah. Right, right, right. Also, they are cute. Yes. They're cute. They can be. They can be. When yeah. they're holding still. When they're holding still and when they're animated. Totally. <laughs> if it's singing a song, <laughs> get Love in it. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last one was that they got to be invited in. Oh, yes. That's a good which one. Is, which is tricky. That one was, that was Bram Stoker invited. Uh, Bram Stoker invented that one. I like that. That, that makes you feel safer because it's like, well, they're not, they can't come in unless you invite them. It was also part of the tragedy because where there's like hints of this in the folklore mm-hmm. would be uh, a dead child and the mother would know and had been told that this is a cursed being, oh, but she brings them in anyway. Because it's And it wasn't so much they couldn't have co- gotten in without an invitation. It was yeah. just that even though this is a cursed thing, the family brought It doesn't them matter. She's yeah. worth it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. Um, but we have these amazing legends, right? So these eight, among many other, as we pointed out, kind of calcify around this, like, creature of the vampire and it gets perpetuated sort of through the centuries and through the years. <laughs> Science finally has their sort of swing at what the, was going on here. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And uh, for one thing, by the way, the digging up all these bodies that we discovered that was sort of like adjacent to the vampire legend was that how many living people we were actually fucking burying. Yeah. Um, you, I don't know if you've been through some of the old cemeteries that have little bells. No, on the what do the bells have you mean? Seen well, Some of you might have seen these yeah. if you go, you know, to the, especially old European okay. um, cemeteries. There'll be these ornate headstones and on the top, a, a little bell with a string that goes down under the ground to the entombed. And it was because we were burying the living with such frequency that it was a, they, if, if I wake up down there, I'll ring I'm going to ring a ding ding this motherfucking thing. Oh, yeah. Because some of these folks, as I described them, and we'll get into, you know, mm-hmm. then we stab and they scream, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. But then there were some of these, this person is dead and rotten and not a vampire, mm-hmm. but they clawed the shit out of the roof of their coffin. <laughs> well, why, the why were so many people being buried alive? I mean, how hard is it to figure well, out if someone's dead? You know, you don't have a real precise measurement. They seem dead. If they seem dead. They were, they were in a coma. And we couldn't oh, feel up, we couldn't feel a pulse. They were super duper unconscious, and yeah. we went like that, uh, you know. Yeah. 
and you want to bury them quick. Also, grave robbers every now and again would stumble upon someone uh, alive. Wow. And we were like, I feel like we're burying a lot more living people than we thought. That's crazy. Crazy. Embalming, of course, tends to put that. Sort of yeah, thing. which is where we get to this because embalming and mortuary science, and it is among the many human uh, activities that we've gotten more sophisticated of course, mm-hmm. since the Middle Ages. And th- this astonishing book, it was written, I cannot believe how long it took, in the 1980s. Mm. Okay. Recent. This dude is like, so I'm looking at all these folklore tales, like the one I described at the beginning of the episode. And he's like, they are absolutely consistent with the process of decomposition without embalming. Mm. So if you did go and dig up a dead body a couple weeks after you buried it, okay, one is, yeah, rigor mortis is temporary. I didn't know that. Um. Rigor mortis sets in about six hours, four or six hours, something like that after you die, and they get all set. But then it goes away. Wow. I didn't know that. So, yeah, if you didn't know that. Of course. You'd be like, shit, this guy's bendy, Mm -hmm. right? The um, pools of blood get red. Blood gets a lot redder, so it looks fresh Mm -hmm. and it's still liquid. The stomach bloats with gas Mm. when it's not evacuated. And so that explains why their bellies looked full and why it would push blood up and out their mouth. So you'd see a little bit trickling Mm -hmm. down the thing. And... Um, some folks would talk about they, they dug up the person and they would be, have been wrapped in a shroud and the area around their mouth was like eaten away. Like okay. they had eaten their own shroud. And they were like, yeah, it's stomach acid is coming this up. This all checks out to me. <laughs> and it would like eat away. So that was like, yeah, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the nails we know grow they keep after growing. death. Your skin actually, after a couple of weeks, will have simply shed the outer layer. Ew. So you would do look kind of dope. Yeah. <laughs> like it's that dermot, like fresh. flat and yeah. fresh. Exactly. And with this belly full of gas, you stab someone, that gas escapes over the vocal cords. No way. And that means that the Sound. body would. <gasps> and among the craziest shit that this means uh-huh. is that everything that we heard in these stories was true. They were doing that. Right? Yeah. Now, the conclusions they came mm-hmm. to were false. But one of the things I, t- I think this teaches us, us, the lesson here is be careful what you say that didn't happen. Oh, That's yeah. That's impossible. You know, mm-hmm. you got to get yeah. your Scully and Mulder <laughs> yeah. out a little bit. And so no matter what you hear, how crazy, when you have centuries of documentation and yeah. you have people who are not liars, who never changed their story, mm-hmm. at some point you have to be like, they saw what they saw. Yeah. Maybe they didn't know something about it, but they did. De- and this and this is one of those cases where you said at the beginning, so are vampires real? Yeah. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, no. Right? Yeah. But... Uh, that doesn't mean that That's the story amazing. I told you at the beginning was not. Because when you first were tell, telling me the beginning of the story, I was like, well, shoot. Like, I don't want to believe these people are lying. And I like to, you know, believe all women. Some of these people are women <laughs> yeah. that are saying this. That's right. And we have to believe yeah. them. Yeah. And I, so I... And I sort of did, and then, but this, and then you tell me the science, and I immediately believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Well, we uh, we are not done. We're, we're going to no. take a short break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to get into um, some of the ins and outs. Okay. Okay. Of the international versions of these stories, and, and how we might be able to save our ass. Okay. Good. <laughs> Have you ever thought there must be more to life than tequila shots, beer, and hard seltzers? Have you ever wanted to take your home bartending game beyond mixing a mean vodka soda or rum and coke? Well, I'm Join Jules, and I'm teaching people how to make a delicious craft cocktail using fresh ingredients in the comfort of your home. And I am Uncle Brad. I am a self-proclaimed cocktail historian and the best damn home bartender in my house. I'm all about teaching people how to make a classic cocktail the right way. So we're starting this podcast, The Art of Drinking, to not only teach you bartending tips and tricks, but each episode will give you two cocktail recipes. One classic traditional approach. And one with a modern twist. The whole time we'll be sharing about the history of the drink or even stories about some of the ingredients that we use. Think of this as a classroom, only you're drinking and there's no test. 
Every week, class is going to be in session and we will release new episodes so you have time to get to the store, buy the goods, and have a drink and a story to tell for the weekend. The Art of Drinking with Join Jules and your favorite uncle is available wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow me at Join Jules on both Instagram and TikTok. And you can also learn more about these episodes by visiting the website joinjules.com. And don't forget, you can always find your favorite Uncle Brad at Cigars and Vino. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode and get ready to sip and enjoy your way to the weekend. Happy Halloween, health listeners. And before we crawl back into the crypts with Macy, a moment to ask you, please, to throw a little candy into my bucket, huh? Go rate and review us wherever you listen. It it really gooses our algorithm and helps keep the history coming. <laughs> and I know you're dying to see Macy and all these spooky night crawlers we're talking about and what I ultimately choose for my costume this year. And you can just head over to Instagram and follow me, follow me, follow me, follow. We're back. And um, you did really well on the quiz in part one. Thank you. I mean, they're definitely, I should have remembered the mirror one and the the last one. It's tricky, but that's also because they vary. Because Mm -hmm. no, you know, vampires are kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, But there is another element from vampire uh, lore and history that is a reoccurring character. So you have another chance at a quiz. Okay. Almost as common as vampires are vampire hunters. Okay. And Van Helsing is one of the most mm-hmm. famous one from the Dra- Dracula novel, but folklore includes them too. Mm-hmm. So your question is, I'm going to give you multiple choice. Okay. According to folklore, how does one become a vampire hunter? A, you're bitten by a vampire, but they suck no blood. Okay. So it's like an act interrupted, kind of a dry mm-hmm. ball, you know, blue ball kind of situation. Got it. B, your father becomes a vampire, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then after that impregnates your mother. Oh, this, that's too specific. Okay. <laughs> or C, your mother gets pregnant after she becomes a vampire. <laughs> Therefore, you are born a vampire hunter. So she gets pregnant. Get, or no, oh, so C has is, you. Right. So C is your mother gets pregnant, mm-hmm. a normal mortal lady, gets bitten while pregnant. Okay. Delivers you a vampire hunter. Oh. Or D, you must be ancestrally tied to the very first vampire hunter who is a specific Celtic wizard. I will be honest, none of, I don't love any of these. Great. Um, <laughs> as my answer. Okay. So, because. Um, you reject the, the I reject premise. them because I, I think that. it should be um, E, whoever has a can do attitude. <laughs> I feel like that's what matters for a vampire hunter. I'm okay, but if I'm really going to guess. That's fair. No, that's fair. Good for you because the Middle Ages, I felt like, had a very narrow vision of what anyone could do. You're a peasant. Absolutely. You're it's a like vampire your last hunter. Name, your last name is, you know, uh, iron, so you work with iron. I don't That's know. That's not fair. Blacksmith, right. whatever. Right. Um, I can't, I'm just going to guess D. D, that you're, you have to be tied to this ancestral Celtic. I kind of like that the best because I think that, that that way it's, you know, in your blood. Right. So to speak. And that seems pivotal. Yeah. Um, well, I will give you a little credit because a Celtic wizard is very featured heavily in a lot of these mm-hmm. folklore uh, mm-hmm. uh, stories, but no. No. According to folklore, the way you become a vampire hunter is if your father becomes a vampire. So this is the one I go, this is a stretch. And okay. Then, and then uh, impregnates your mother whilst he is a vampire. Thus, you have like a little vampire seed. Your half? Well, that's the theory. Okay. But you're mortal enough that you got to kill... Which is, it's very, it's very psychological. The, the idea yeah. that you got to kill your father Which because that part. Becca yeah. and Becca, Bella and mm. Edward have mm-hmm. a baby. Right. So she could be a vampire hunter then? Because Edward, oh, they're, but, but they're, because, because she got pregnant before. Exactly. And he's got to bite her so she doesn't die during childbirth. 
Remember? Because yep. that fear was yep. that, that he put a little baby vampire yep. in her uterus and it was going to be a little bit terrible. So he had to... So they made up their own. Okay. Okay. They, they, but I liked, but I liked that when I, because yeah. when I read the thing, I was like, "Ooh, go on, Twilight." Yeah. I titled this part: "The Undead Are Answer Monsters." Okay. <laughs> They're the monsters that answered our questions, because these, when you think about it, comes down to disease and contagion. Mm-hmm. You, you nailed it exactly mm-hmm. at the beginning. There is a real, actual fear of your sick fucking relatives killing everybody in your family after they die yeah. because uh yeah a little piece of them mm-hmm. that is evil and terrible and dangerous and murderous is still among us yeah. traveling from person to person like there is something in that that we were maybe picking up you mm-hmm. know and that a fear of a vampire was the fear of our disease that travels person to person whereas our fear of werewolves was the diseases that pass from animals, mm-hmm. which is also a very real and tangible thing, especially in the Middle Ages, that you had to be worried about getting bit by these fucking things, right? Um, and it's also really interesting how the same question of disease from dead relatives and disease from these infected wild animals mm-hmm. in the woods were like conceptualized in different places in Europe. It's like Western Europe, the Germanic people were like, yeah, totally. These dead relatives, this spooky shit, 100% real. And it's witches. Uh-huh. And they historically went after finding the cunt right. that's responsible in burning her ass, mm-hmm. right? Whereas the Slavic <laughs> Europeans on the Eastern side were like, right, yep, totally dead relatives, evil, 100%. And that's because of our dead people. And they went and murdered their dead. Like... I'd rather murder the dead. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> That's Another a better reason way to, to love yeah. vampires is like, it's oogie that we're sticking yeah. stakes in all of our dead aunties. But we're not killing uh, the, living the living women. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, mm-hmm. you know, pick your poison. Um, but th- here's what's interesting that happens, too, is some of our science advances. So I told you that most of our folklore of vampires is Middle Ages, 500 mm-hmm. about 1400. Then we don't fucking talk about them. For about 500 years. What? Because we kind of figured it out. Yeah. I mean, not that we knew exactly. I told mm-hmm. you that didn't happen until the 90s, but it was like, yeah, we can't keep digging each other up, stabbing yeah. each other. The church also was like, it's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. It's not exactly. Yeah. It's pagan shit. Stop it. Right? Um, so we kind of stopped. And then we have this guy, Polidori, who I told you was in the castle with Mary Shelley on mm-hmm. that dark and stormy night when he starts to pen our new vampire. Our new Mm -hmm. modern 17th, 18th century version of this guy. And part of the reason why Polidori wrote this was because vampires were already kind of hot. They were already sort of Mm -hmm. bubbling up again because there was like a systematic study. we, We were reading all this folklore I referenced and the folks were like, well, what, huh? What was going on yeah. there? And they're trying to get a real like pin on pinned down mm-hmm. on like what exactly that was. So the stories are coming up and people are asking, was this real? And they're like, well, there's Vlad the Impaler, you know, this guy, yeah. this real living guy from Transylvania who was a sadist who loved to sit around dead bodies and sticking people to people's asses and okay. stuff. Elizabeth of Bathroy was a similar real serial killer. In and it's Eastern like, are Europe. these monsters or are these people kind of, right? And were they actually mystical crazy? Yeah. Or were, is this where our folklore comes from? And literacy is really high and printing is really mm-hmm. easy and cheap. And just like you and me yeah. <laughs> had with the Twilight books, yeah. man, there's something about it that yeah. is very compelling and very sexy. And so we're all super into it. But what Polidori does to it that is so fucking fascinating and no less psychological, right, is that if you looked at like, okay, our deepest fears, what can kill us, what can really kill Mm -hmm. us is this disease, a plague that comes up from the grave and gets us, that's actually dangerous. And then here's this mythical thing we put around it. For Polidori, it went from a disease and a dead relative to the richest guy in your Hmm. country who simply won't die. Hmm. That's the scariest, most dangerous thing that sucks the blood, that takes advantage, that drains the Very modern. Exactly. (laughs) And people were like, whoa, man. And and why the image of the vampire continues to be revived because there's always a vampire-shaped humanoid Mm -hmm. hole that is... What's wrong? Who's Mm -hmm. the bad guy? What is the scary thing that's going to get us? And I would venture that the next vampire we see in popular culture, and if this is right, girl, somebody Mm -hmm. owes me one you can pay, is going to be an AI. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's going to be that we've artificially generated a new vampire 
And that's going to be the thing wow. that gets us because I think that's our deepest fear right now yeah. is what are we making? Mm-hmm. What are our new? And that's particularly awesome to me because it comes back to Frankenstein and we, vampires holding hands. They just yeah. never, they never let go. And Frankenstein is sort of AI. Yeah. <laughs> At that time. A hundred percent. Yes, exactly right. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Okay, so here's my here's my my next part. This is where we're gonna go around the world. Okay. Uh, we are going to prepare the listeners of Hilf wherever you are to identify, okay. avoid, and or become mm-hmm. one of these sexy ass creatures okay. of the night. Um, shall we start in the Middle East? We should always start Why in the not? Middle East. Okay, yeah. so in China, Japan, and the Middle East, there is a a version of vampire. Um, the The difference is they're not they were not always human or once human. They okay. their their vampires can sometimes get into the alien mm. version okay. of otherworldly creature, and they don't necessarily drink your blood, but they will drain your life force. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And they can do that sexually. So okay. So watch your ass. Yeah. Um, in uh, the Celtic world, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, uh-huh. little twist you might want to be aware of. Vampires there have been known to walk around at night with a bowl asking you to cut yourself and please drain your blood into the bowl they're carrying. So they can just drink it nicely? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I know. I kind of feel like. I don't mind that. It seems nice. It's better than there's killing consent. me. There's consent. Yeah, there's consent. <laughs> right? Yeah. So do, I don't think you should do it. But you yes, can but you or can't. It's, it's up to up you. To you. Um, if you're in India, mm-hmm. there's a creature called the Betal. And this is kind of tricky. This is a spirit that can make the dead look like they're alive. Kind of a puppeteer sort of make the dead animate. And they occasionally hang upside down like a bat. Hmm. Right. Okay. Something to be aware of. Romania. Oh, that's the real deal. Right. Exactly. If you're going to write one down, Mm -hmm. I feel like these are the ones who know. Um, Here are some ways you can become a vampire. We all know if you are bitten. Mm -hmm. And live. And live. That's key. Some, like, in Lost Boys, you drank... The blood from the wine bottles seem to be, like, daddy's blood or something. It's hard to say. But in Romania, other ways you can become a vampire include killing yourself... Watch out for that. It was probably not your goal. No. Being born with a deformity. Hmm. What, you know, just know that okay. that could be what's going to happen there. If your family doesn't bury you properly. Well, I don't even know, like too shallow? Too shallow. Okay. <laughs> maybe they didn't uh, uh, okay. twice uh-huh. or, you know, maybe there was a. That you weren't dressed right. Something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Certain animals jump over your grave. So you could have gone through all that. Natural oh, right. death, good person. If a black hen, cat, a black hen, a, a black dog, a bat, if they fly over your grave right after you're buried, there's nothing you can control. Sad. Which is, I think we also have like the sad sack vampires. Those are my favorites. The ones who are like, fucking hate being a vampire. I do. I like, I love those. The I, reluctant ones. Yes. Because it's like they didn't choose it. Totally. They think I love the they think they're a monster. They yeah, hate that I about hate themselves. That. I've been trying to drink other kinds of blood. Mm-hmm. Maybe I made friends with a remember the there was this wonderful late night TV show, very sexy, mm-hmm. called Forever Night, K N I G H T. Oh, I don't know Forever Night. And um he's a vampire who Nicolas, who, if I remember right, was trying to make up for all of his evil ways mm-hmm. by being an late night murder detective in New York. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Reboot he, that. I agree. I agree. I'll look into it. Do but, you find it fascinating a little bit that, because we don't know, none of us can, we don't know for sure where COVID came from, right? Right. But a bat is, and it is like a real thought. You for think sure. that's a little folklore <gasps> Yeah. A little bit of people still. Absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. hundred percent. Also like, like we said earlier, there's that like little bit of truth in there, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah, who knows? It could, for, for sure, I think that we look to like what happened and we're looking for lowercase italics vermin. Yeah. And that's because historically, generationally, that's been the case. That's yeah. why you got to watch out when people start calling humans vermin. Oh, that's like the worst thing you can call because someone. Because if you, because it's the the next logical conclusion is extermination. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't tolerate vermin. You don't yeah. allow a couple rats to live in your house. No, you don't. 
So just simply calling someone vermin is wow. tapping in yeah, yeah, yeah. to a very fundamental get rid of them all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, I feel like for these Romanian, like if your family doesn't bury you properly. <laughs> that's on. That's that's awful. Maybe that's why you start with them. If yeah. you are an undead. Then you kill them yeah. for not. Oh, yeah. you didn't have, you didn't put dollars on my eyeballs, huh? <laughs> Great. I hope that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Carpathian Mountains, should you find yourself. Oh, I'm usually there in the summer. It's, this is kind of a spring okay, deal for yeah. our family. The undead there turn into moths, and they eat your soul one little bite at a time over the course that of many nights. That takes a long time. So okay. just don't, I feel like if no you moths. just don't stay long, like limit it to a couple of weeks, you're probably okay. Mothballs. Um, loved this one, the West Indies. And they share some traditions with like the deep south and Cajun culture oh. in the United States. You can apparently catch a vampire and prevent them from entering your home by putting one drop of your blood into an empty wine bottle mm. or like mm-hmm. glass bottle and hanging it from the tree. That's easy. They go in there, get the blood, can't get out. Uh, the vampire goes yeah, in there? Yeah, vampires. And not just vampires, apparently vampires, ghosts. A bunch of evil spirits, they can't resist going in, and, and they can't get And out. you can't see them, but they're there. And they're there. there. Okay. So apparently you see a lot of bottles hanging in mm-hmm. trees. It's like, is this good news or bad news? Yes. <laughs> is this a hip little wine bar? Or uh, yeah. <laughs> It could be. And if you go in looking for one and get <laughs> yeah. the other, it's kind of rotten. <laughs> could ruin the uh, vacation. Also, this is interesting. A chant. There's a chant you can do to prevent them from coming in. Okay. okay. Even if like one of your idiot roommates invites one in yeah. like a dummy. Um, you chant Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Three times while making the sign of the cross over every window and every door. Boom. Can't get in. Over every window and every door. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three times sign of the cross, every window and door. It's going to take a minute. I know. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a minute, but like it's way cheaper than like a I love like it's just Thursday, game. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> I love that too. I read this twice. I was like, what? Because it's like they wanted to come up with something that was easy enough for everyone to remember, I yeah. think. And if they had made it just a little bit more complicated, uh-huh. you know, because if, if we had to remember, like, um, the history and folklore of vampires, the stories and legends being mythical beings, we couldn't memorize we that. So that. we already have the days of the week memorized. We do. And also the days of the week are kind of Latin. Yeah. They're based in Latin. Everyone has days of the week. <laughs> you got, them you the got your own version. Yeah. Exactly. I even know it in Spanish. Yeah. But Prove if it. I start with Monday. <laughs> Lunas, martes, miércoles, jueves, jue- jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, jueves. Uh, uh, so they're had, in. By the time you, they're, they're in. They're in they already. already. Got in already. Well, I know it from the Adams Family song, so I have to go. Lunas y es martes, miércoles y jueves, viernes y sábado, domingo. Oh. So I would have to every time go domingo, and they're yeah, they're in. And then the, yeah, by then, I mean, unless you have a really small house, like one door, one window, yeah. then maybe. Yeah. Either way, I feel like this is something. This is one of those why not try it. Yeah, of course. If you find yourself in a horror film scenario, you can be like, ah, fucking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? The Inuit population. Mm-hmm. Okay, their freezing climate culture. They have a story of a of the dead ones who have drowned coming to shore to embrace and try to get the warmth okay. from their living. I thought that yeah. was interesting, trying to get the life force. Yeah. So there, if you if you weren't able, if you're in the car going somewhere spooky, you're like shit. Uh, you can find all of these in our links. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Before you travel, you uh-huh. can just make note of what to do, and then also, of course, watch out for the weirdos because in real life today. You may have heard of the internet. Mm-hmm. Wow. Talk about a dark and spooky wood. Yeah. Um, so there's blood fetishists. Oh, oh, oh. Uh-huh. And necrophiliacs and cannibals that can kind of dangle a long, disgusting toenail <laughs> over some of these categories. Um, and, and they're not that recent. In fact, one of the most famous cases mm-hmm. of a real life psycho vampire is the vampire of Dusseldorf. Oh, I don't know him. 1930s. His real name is Peter Curtin. Killed at least nine people and uh, generally speak just a rapist who couldn't orgasm without seeing blood. Okay. And uh, So he had to kill. He would kill and then he'd, once he saw the blood, it was, and then he'd drink a little bit of it mm. and uh, not great. He didn't want to waste. And, and the folks out there who are self-identifying. Yeah, uh, what do you say to them? Embracing vampire culture. Well, there seems to be some consent. 
they're looking, they're often in search of what they call blood dolls. People who are like, I'll do, yeah. Great. But these people, I shouldn't say these people. Um, I think if you're going to diminish a population. It's okay to do vamp people who want to be yeah. vamp. Cause, I mean, because they can't look in the mirror. <laughs> right, they cannot. And see these things. No, themselves. so I have to show them themselves. Right. I feel like, though, it is a desire to, there's no way you naturally enjoy the taste of blood. Right. It's it's a it's a mm -hmm. learned, it's a wanting to be something. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think um, that is an interesting person just forcing or like if I don't know like what kind of trauma happens yeah. to where you then, you know. It is trauma. I mean that it's it, even be. this guy, Peter Curtin. Yeah. Like I, I spent about two minutes being like, ooh, the vampire of Dusseldorf. Was there any mysticism in there? And they were yeah. like, no, no, no. Just no, he was... many, many years of terrible, violent abuse. Uh-huh. Um, it's a horrible person. Horrible, raised by horrible people, mm -hmm. generational trauma. Yeah, broken, broken dude. And he was executed, incidentally, by beheading. So this is really. So, I mean, I don't think they I stuck he anything loved in his that, heart because he was like, "This is the only way you can get me." And then they got him. Uh, mm. Yeah, I mean, something kind of beautiful about Peter it. Curtin. Peter Curtin, K U R T E N, the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. I mean, fuck him. Yeah. Um, and I know that you're a reader. I have a book recommendation. Oh, okay. You. Or at least a book you can pretend you've read if I'll you do really that. Is there a movie? Sound. I hope so. If oh, not, <laughs> we are in the right city. <laughs> um, so I told you Polidori, he wrote that spooky book called The Vampire, which features, you know, the first vampire mm -hmm. that was rich and lived in a castle and was seductive and women were sort of willing victims. And this was his critique, not just of the like rich and powerful class, but also specifically of the man Byron. Lord Byron, mm. who was uh, an absolute uh, deviant, sexual deviant, he would target specifically peasant women uh, because mm. they could, their families could do nothing about it. Yeah. And the sexual diseases that he was passing on to these women were fatal. Hmm. And Polidori thought that he was a monster who Amen. was, in essence, murdering the women he seduced. Right. He mm. absolutely was. And absolutely was. Yeah. And this was how he, you know, crafted the story. It was ironic because people attributed this short story, The Vampire, to Byron until mm. Polidori was like, not only did I write it, I wrote it about that fucking guy. Byron got the credit for a little while? There were It wasn't, he didn't try. It yeah. was just people piecing because it happened mm -hmm. at his castle mm -hmm. and they were all his friends. And it was like this anonymous. And Polidori was like, girl, bit, yeah. hey, man. All the things. He also, Vampire. side note, Polidori had a huge crush on Mary Shelley. Okay. And was like, this whole weekend that they're all doing opium and hanging mm -hmm. out and stuff, his diary is like, Mary, talk to me today. Oh, oh, oh. Did yeah. they ever get together that we know of? No. Mm. She was boffin Shelley at the time. She was what? Her, uh, Percy Shelley was her fella, and oh. he, she was pretty devoted to him. Got it, got it, got it. Um, you said boppin, right? Boppin. That's boffin, what. Boffin, boppin, boppin. That is boffin. the lexicon of the 18th century. Got it. Yeah, yeah that's what they were doing. Um, but our guy Polidori writes this great book. It was fantastic. Um, and that was in 1819, give or take. Uh, Bram Stoker writes Dracula in like 1898. Okay. Okay. And Dracula's the one. Dracula's clear. I mean, there was a bunch of other like small vampire books and like serials that were published in magazines and stuff like that. Like they were kind of mm -hmm. a popcorn pop culture stuff. But Dracula was the one that everybody remembers, of course. In between Polidori and Bram Stoker is a book called Camilla. Carmilla. Ooh. A book called Carmilla. It was written in 1872 by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. And it is a girl vampire. Really? And, oh, my God. Carmilla is very Dracula-esque. She's rich. She's mysterious. Mm -hmm. She's interesting. She falls in love and tries desperately to seduce our heroine, Laura. And like... Oh, a, a woman. A woman. Well, this was written back then? 1872. Wow. And Carmilla like appears in Laura's bedroom in the middle of the night and begs her to let her bite her. I mean... It Whoa. is. There's a vampire hunter in this book. Which, you know, that's not easy because a lot has to happen for someone to be a vampire <laughs> yes, hunter. We've learned there's yeah. like a process there. So go find yourself this Carmilla that was written 60 years 
before Dracula. When did you read this book? I've only read it in portions. Because yeah. I didn't find it. I read. So I you read just found out about I it. I just found out okay. about it in my research. So I started reading um, the sections that were available mm-hmm. from like here's the book, you know, the book. and then there were some like. Uh, you know, college freshman, like, of course, I'm gonna do a one woman show about Carmel. And you're yes, like, fuck y'all. Find it, wow. devour it. Um, my friend Macy Isaacs, that mm. was the hill thing. I vampires. can't believe how much I learned. <gasps> Yay. Yeah, right? Yeah, that was, I, I'm really excited, and I really just want it to be fall. Aww. I know, I feel like. but when this comes out, it will be. Yes, and, and there will I be technically sweaters. think it is. Is it already technically fall? It depends on where you are. I just went to Boston, and, and it was. They had trees with yellows and oranges Aww. and reds were just starting to creep out. That's yeah. amazing. But well, if you go to Trader Joe's, it's definitely fall. For, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's Starbucks. Yes, is fully in. Yes, but when I'm dripping sweat, I just don't want pumpkin. No, and I feel like as a Midwest girl, it's this real. Like I get like vertigo because yeah. normally every other year of my life before I moved and I moved to LA ten years ago, mm-hmm. fall is the edge of the abyss. What's a, falling into winter? Yeah. You are about to get into them cold, long night, mm-hmm. dark as fuck, freezing cold, Read warming your up book. your car, scraping your windshield. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. And you're like no, and you start to see the changing leaves, and you're like no, 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 no. And now <laughs> I get yeah, like, you want that. Get me to a fireplace. I love winter in LA. Oh, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. And if you're really like, you get a rainy day. Yeah. What are you going to be for Halloween this year? I thought it'd be funny if um, my husband and I were Ina Garden and Jeffrey. I don't know if you are aware. (laughs) Okay. Ina Garden is a um, cook. I don't watch her very much, but we have like all of her cookbooks, and my husband likes her. And it's um, she always wears like a collared shirt. Pop. She's just this woman that lives on the East Coast and just makes <laughs> fresh things. And I, I thought that would be funny. Um, but that's really my only. I've never. We've he and I have never done. We've been together forever. But we've never really done a joint mm-hmm. costume before. Um, do you know what you're going to be? That is. Now with the kiddo who has sort of mm-hmm. woken up into Halloween, that becomes really the hot, hot topic of yeah. conversation this time of year. Yeah. I have done Mega Mom stuff where I've made her a costume. Yeah. I made her a spider costume I'm still super proud of wow. with like the arms were all connected and she could like get on the floor and like scuttle. Oh, and scuttle. <laughs> and it was very cool and creepy. But then last year, she was like, I want to be an astronaut. And we had a package astronaut costume yeah. that one of her cousins gave her. And it was like, pfft, perfect. Boom. Done yeah. deal. This year, we're starting to be like, whatever it is, it needs high heels. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like fancy, maybe an updo. And I'm like a princess. And she's like, sure. If what that's about what you need Carmella? me to do. What about she's Sure. What's I could be like, honey, you could be the first lesbian, lesbian vampire. vampire. Well, I did sort of around, I did Sally. I recommended Sally, which okay. is kind of, she's very feminist. Ske- like the, like Jack Skellington and Ske- yeah. Sally. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And then Corpse Bride, I thought mm, you can wear, fun. you can be spooky and dead mm-hmm. and have high heels. And then can <laughs> yogurt be Frank and Weenie? Yeah. You've, you're fun. really tapping in exactly. Yeah. And then we already have a Snow White dress, um, but I... I, have, I keep saying, or Snow White. and I, What if you did Snow Black and did like a dark twist on Snow White? It's good. Can't do dark face. Can't. No, 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 not that way. <laughs> I mean, it's her no, school. Just goth. Very- just goth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I don't even know if you can say goth anymore. I think so. Uh, I think that I one's think okay. So. I think so. We'll see. I will, I will certainly update. There will be photos. On social media. Well, especially if it's blackface. It'll, <laughs> It'll be all over the place. Yeah. It'll be on the news. Yeah. Uh, well, it was Macy, nice knowing you. It was nice. Yeah. Have fun. You, <laughs> you, RIP, you will be the undead in 500 years. <laughs> That's right. You can come back. Um, well, Maisie Isaac, this has been a, an absolute delight. Uh, I think everyone should follow you everywhere you. and watch all of your things Thank and you. on all the what have yous. And, um, and I'll be seeing you out there. Sounds the great. Uh, this was so fun. Th- so thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks again.
again to Macy Isaacs. Oh, she is so much fun and she is a rising star girl. So find her wherever she's performing live. And, and then you can also get updates on her upcoming special by clicking all her links in our show notes. <laughs> and as for us, we're going to elegantly step from folklore interpretation of Dian in the Middle Ages to the actual Dian <laughs> in the Middle Ages, okay? It's the plague, the bubonic plague, a.k.a. the Black Death. <laughs> Ooh, girl, undoubtedly this was the single most catastrophic event in human history, okay? It killed half the population of Europe in only five years. It is a batshit horror show that is both a millennia behind us and right under our feet. <laughs> so, my guest is the music supervisor to Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, Mary Ramos. Guys, she did Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Kill Bill. You're gonna fucking shit. She's so cool. <laughs> And until we meet again, our theme song was composed and performed by Kat Perkins. A reminder that you can find my sources, links to the books, documentaries, and articles I reference in the summary of this episode or by emailing us, hilfpodcast at gmail.com or messaging us on social media at hilfpodcast. If you'd like to leave a little cash on the nightstand, we are so grateful. <laughs> Find us on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Links to these and more are all in our show notes. <laughs> this has been Hilf. History I'd like to fuck with Don Brody. I'm Don Brody, reminding you that history is a party and everybody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> A luna si es martes, miércoles si jueves, viernes si sábado, domingo.